Hey, it's all with a dragonfly guide to toolsmithing for professions. I haven't found any online, and probably for good reason, because it's easy to mess up specializations and no one wants to take the blame. So here, here I am, ready to take the heat. This is a guide for crafters on what to do in order to make tools for others so you can get skill points for your profession and or to make decent gold. As always, every market and every realm is different. Your results will depend on a good bit of luck and your willingness to seek out work. This is an MMO and you're roleplaying someone with a job. So yeah. This guide is made to the best of my personal experience and research. I tested these as best as I could and I'll be honest here, I might be off in a few places. Use this video to point you in the right direction and also at your own risk. Check the comment section below for corrections and edits. Also hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and let's get right to it. This guide assumes that you're starting out fresh with your profession, when you have the highest amount of knowledge points or KP to work with. If your crafter already has a lot of points spent, use this guide as a reference to what direction you want your crafter to go to next. If you've already gone down a certain spec path and you feel like you made a mistake, you're making kind of a bigger mistake by trying to change direction. My advice is to stick with what you spec for and make the best of it. The following are general directions to follow regardless of your profession. First is to complete the profession intro quests. You get some reputation with the Artisan's Consortium, which provides some precious KP and recipes as you hit reputation milestones, and it unlocks the rare chance of obtaining Dragon Shards of Knowledge, which give more points and extra metal. Next, locate all the extra sources of KP out in the world. An add-on like Handy Notes is an extremely easy way to locate all these sources at a glance. You'll also be completing weekly quests, finding random treasures, and wrapping up for extra KP and recipes. I'm going to point those out where necessary per profession. Next is to power level your profession. The website WoW Professions has a really fantastic series of guides to help you level most professions to around the 50s or so, which will let you unlock two of the three or four branches. This will also give you a bunch of KP to get you started on specializing. Then, if your profession allows for it, buy up whatever cheap recipes that you can from the auction house and craft those items for more KP. Now, I did say cheap. Going through these power leveling steps is already going to cost you some capital, and after all, you're trying to get started with your tool crafting, and you want to avoid making too big of an investment that you might not get back right away. The last thing to know, regardless of what kind of toolsmith you want to be, is to understand the general approach to high level crafting. This is going to reflect throughout this guide. Inspiration, that is the chance to get bonus skill, comes first, followed by cheap bonus reagents that enhance inspiration. This guide is not going to employ the use of illustrious insight. Then there's the base skill that comes from KP, and finally your profession level. The fastest and so far the cheapest way to create high level tools is to rely on inspiration bonuses using rank 2 parts and finishing reagents where applicable. Your skill only needs to be high enough to where an inspiration proc and bonuses will push the rest of the way to reaching the recipe difficulty and crafting a rank 5. Now let's dive into each profession starting with blacksmithing. Blacksmithing can be slightly tricky because you need to put points in up to 3 branches. So starting with specialty training, plug 5 points into the base node. Then put 10 points into toolsmithing to unlock the Kazgarite blacksmith's toolbox. Now move over. Switch over to Hammer Control and throw 10 points into the base node, then cram 30 points straight into Poignant Plans. Now let's go back to Toolsmithing under Specialty Smithing and max that out for some really big boosts to your skills and inspiration. It also unlocks the use of Stable Fluidic Draconium to enhance your inspiration boosts. As you're pumping points here, you should also be working towards unlocking tool recipes by repping up with the Valdraken Accord and the Maruk Centaur. They also give extra KP at certain renown levels. Now you can focus a bit more on upping your base skill by pumping points into hammer control and start earning skill points by monitoring the crafting tables or trade chat for work on anything that you can craft, especially your tools. Your goal is to try and hit 60 so you can access weapon smithing later. We're still not done learning recipes, but I strongly suggest first being able to craft your currently known tool recipes to a rank 5. That's going to put you well on your way towards easily maxing out your skill level if the market is good. Once you're able to rank 5 your main tools, there's one recipe left for blacksmithing, and that's a pickaxe. To get there, break into weapon smithing and put 10 points into the base. Then spec into hafted and put 10 points into that. And finally spec into axes and put 10 more points to access the pickaxe recipe. 
If you can already make the other tools at rank 5, you should have good headway into making this at a rank 5. Blacksmiths can also craft hammers, which is also accessed through weaponsmithing, but this is kind of a trap, or at least it should be considered final priority. An even better hammer can be made by blacksmiths via recipe. The trade-off is that this can only be made on their own and for themselves, so the demand for this hammer is going to be pretty low. Enchanting is pretty easy to spec for as it's straightforward. Pump 20 points into rods, runes, and ruses, then unlock both rods and wands and inspired devotion. Max out inspired devotion for the inspiration bonus, then return to rods and wands. 10 points will unlock the enchanting tool recipe, so definitely get that, but only dump like 40 out of the 45 points into this tree. Only come back if you happen to need the extra base points. Then go back to the base node, and by the time you put 35 points in here, you should be able to rank 5 a rod. Wrap up with the Dragon Scale Expedition and the Ascara Tuscar for extra KP. Engineering has, with little doubt, the least straightforward path to spec for, because you'll eventually need to spec into three trees to do well with tool crafting, while with blacksmithing you could opt to skip out on pickaxes and still be fine. So first dump points into Function Over Form. This is going to give a ton of base points, inspiration, and it unlocks the overcharged overclocker to raise inspiration even more. Optimize Efficiency's base node is the next thing to max out. From here, if you're able to reach level 60 and learn a third branch, I would suggest going for Mechanical Mind and take that to 10 points. Then get into Novelties and distribute points between Mechanical Mind and Novelties until you can rank 5 a recipe. If you can't get to skill level 60, invest into Generalist under Optimized Efficiency. Both routes should get you eligible to crank rank 5s, but going for Mechanical Mind and Novelties will get you there slightly sooner. While you're earning points, put your time into repping up with the Dragon Scale Expedition and the Valdraken Accord for engineering recipes and bonus KP. Inscription is also fairly straightforward. Start off with 10 points in Rune Mastery. This lets you move to Infinite Discovery, which you want to max out for the inspiration. Then we move on to Rune Binding. Put 10 points here and move down to Wood Carving. Another 10 points there and learn, hey, it's called Profession Tools. 10 points gets you the recipe, and put another 5 points in for some inspiration. You're probably short on base skill at this stage, so put more points into Rune Binding until it's maxed out, which lets you apply Pounce for an Inspiration bonus. And then back to Rune Mastery and put points here for some bonus skill level, and you should be able to get to a rank 5. Additional tool recipes are locked behind Artisan's Consortium Rep, so be sure to do your weeklies, and for extra KP, rep up with the Dragon Scale Expedition and the Valdraken Accord. Jewel crafting has proven to be a fairly crowded market, meaning as a tool crafter, you'll be helping them tear each other apart. Start with 10 points in Jeweler's Toolset Mastery, and then go all in with Brilliant Bobbling for the inspiration. Now we just need more base skill. Go back and max out Toolset Mastery and then move on to Enterprising. Plug 10 points into the base to unlock Extravagancies and max that out, then return to Enterprising and add points until you can rank 5 tools. You should be able to use Vibrant Polishing Claws to raise your inspiration bonuses too. As a jewel crafter, you'll be spending extra time wrapping up with the Dragon Scale Expedition and the Ascara Tuscar. Leather workers can only make accessories and not tools, making rank 5s of these a little bit lower in demand, but the spec ought to be fairly fast to max out. Thanks to having both male and leather recipes, they get more starting KP than other professions. However, the recipes are learned through the Centaur and Tuscar reps, so these could take a little while to unlock. Whatever the case though, all you need to do is max out leatherworking discipline, all inspiring works, and bonding and stitching. Finally, there's tailoring, which also only makes accessories. Tailoring turns out to be one of the more confusing specs because it's not immediately clear that you need to specialize in armor in order to max out the accessories that tailors can craft. So max out tailoring mastery and shrewd stitchery for the skill and the inspiration. Then you're moving on to garment crafting. Plug points into the base node and unlock outerwear and outfits. 10 points into each of these will let you access hats and robes respectively. But if you add another 10 points to outfits, you can unlock a recipe to create a better set of robes for tailors, although that requires considerable specializations in draconic needlework. You're likely to be short on skill at this point, so plug 5 points into hats and robes for the skill bonuses, and then go higher up the trees adding points for the big bonuses. You can also go all in with outerwear so you can attach chromatic embroidery thread, which will increase your inspiration bonus. The market for hats is bigger than for tailoring robes, so I suggest focusing on making rank 5 hats first. 
The recipes for these can be found from the Valdraken Accord and the Dragon Scale Expedition. That about covers all the professions that can make tools and accessories. I know it's not the easiest guide with all the jumping around, but I tried my best to go for covering the biggest bonuses first before filling out skills that eat your way into rank 5 territory. I hope this guide was helpful, but we could do with your suggestions and or corrections down in the comments. Thanks for coming, like the video if it was useful, and I'll catch you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.